We continue to follow the leaked draft opinion from the Supreme Court, which indicates the court may overturn Roe v. Wade. And joining us now live for an in-depth look at the future of Roe v. Wade is local attorney Charles LeMandry. Thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be with you. Thanks for having me. Let's first talk about the impact that this has on the integrity, on the reputation of the Supreme Court, given that this was leaked. This is unprecedented. It is unprecedented and it's quite shocking because as the Chief Justice said today in his press statement from the Supreme Court, it does undermine the integrity of the court's operations and procedures. And as a practicing attorney for 40 years, I have not ex experienced anything like this in my practice. And it's deeply troubling. And I'm glad to see that the Chief Justice has instructed the marshal of the court to do an investigation, find the person responsible, and hopefully bring them to justice. So this does not happen again. Charles, I think it's important that we know this is not a final decision, despite how much talk there is around this. The court could still change its mind, correct? That's true. It, it's a draft decision. It came out, uh, I've got a copy of it in front of me, in February of this year. And there may have been other draft opinions circulated uh, since then. We really don't know, but I expect that's probably the case. And uh, certainly not a final decision yet, and it's too soon for anybody to uh, celebrate on the pro-life side of the case, although it is a strong indication that at least the majority of the justices at that time were inclined to overrule the Roe v. Wade case and, and the Casey decision. At least that's how this draft decision comes down, and we feel it's very well reasoned. Uh, it's a strong decision, and uh, from the pro-life side, we'd like to see it become final. But you're quite correct. It's not final yet, and we can't be certain which way the court's going to ultimately hold. But Hopefully, we'll have an answer to that question within the next month or two. Hey, you mentioned the pro-life side. I explain to people in legal terms why this would be such a win for that side. Sure. As a law presently exists, uh, people uh, in the various states are held under the regime of these two Supreme Court decisions, which basically legalized abortion in all 50 states of the United States. I'm talking about, again, the Roe v. Wade case. and and the Casey case. And uh, as it stands, the states cannot regulate abortion for the uh, first 23 weeks because uh, under the current accepted standards, the fetus is not viable until 23 weeks. It can't live outside the, the mother's uh, womb until approximately that time. Although with the advances in medicine and science, of course, that can change and has changed over the last 50 years. But when Mississippi did, it passed a law uh, saying that abortions could not uh, take place after 15 months, unless it's a, a medical emergency, something of that nature, or the, the fetus is terribly disfigured. But um, up until the Supreme Court ruled, or will rule, hopefully, uh, in this case, the, the Dobbs case, uh, they could, the states could not regulate uh, abortion or prevent abortion uh, up till 23 weeks. Now, uh, what this decision will do if it becomes final is going to say there are no restrictions on a national basis on the state's ability to regulate abortion. The Supreme Court is saying that there is no real constitutional basis for the Roe and Casey decisions in terms of the Supreme Court laying down the law of the land for all 50 states. And it's going to give the decision on whether to regulate abortion back to the states. So 26 states weighed in in favor of the state of Mississippi in this case, which had passed the law at issue before the court, saying that the court should leave it up to the states. And this strongly worded a draft decision basically says that's what the court's going to do, is going to leave it up to the people's elected representatives. They're the ones who should be deciding in the state legislatures whether or not abortion will, abortion will be regulated. And right now it looks like the states are roughly split down the, the middle 50-50 on those that uh, want to uh, tighten restrictions on abortion or outlaw abortion or, uh, in fact, relax uh, restrictions on abortion, which California seems poised to do. There's bills uh, pending to even make what they call uh, California to be a sanctuary state to allow women to come in from other states to have abortions here and perhaps even be subsidized by the taxpayers of California and even legislation pending that would appear to allow infanticide, meaning that babies could be uh, killed even after they're born if that was the mother's intent to have an abortion and somehow the baby survived the abortion because of Bill Pending talks about uh, abortions uh, for, uh, that would uh, not be uh, regulated for perinatal death. And unlike prenatal, which is before birth, perinatal is after birth. And 
could be uh, days or weeks or even months, depending on how you define perinatal. Uh, so uh, the states are, are poised to act individually either to support abortion bans or to strike them down. So it'll be very interesting to see what the Supreme Court ultimately does. But one thing is for sure, the debate over abortion is not over in the United States, and it's going to be have to fought out apparently state to state if the Supreme Court adopts a draft decision or something close to it as a final decision uh, when it comes out in the next two months. All right. Again, we will have to wait and see. Attorney Charles Lemandry, thank you so much for your time and your insight this afternoon. Sure. Thanks for having me.